Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. A wacky rig stinkworm may appear unconventional to some, yet its flapping action does trigger strikes, often when other lures fail. Predominantly a finesse presentation, the wacky rig emulates a vulnerable creature when twitched beneath the water surface. This week, Kim demonstrates the versatility and effectiveness of a wacky rig ocho on highly populated public waters. Whether weightless shallow or drop shotted deep, this rig simply pays off. Enough said. Heavily inhabited all sports lakes present bass and those that seek them a wealth of visible cover during the summer months. The abundance of docks, pontoons, and boat lifts provide structure and an overhead canopy. And today, Kim sets out on the lake where he developed his passion towards the sport at an early age. Although he no longer fishes in his whitey tighties, he's confident as to where to locate fish in his current attire. They'll be under the docks the primary place, that and off the break. Lots of shade under the pontoons. Come on. Show me you're in there. That was a good shot. That ocho skipped so good. Here we go. Right where I said they'd be. He ain't that big. He ain't that big. He ain't that small. I still have met him. <laughs> Get out of the <laughs> Just to keep her size. Get out of there. But you were laying up under that dock, weren't you? Yes, you were. A five inch ocho. I love skipping docks. A little guy. There's bigger ones. I guarantee you. You go on back in there. Go on. All right. Well, that'll get us started anyway. Weightless ocho. We got lots of docks to fish today. There he is. There he is. This one might be a little better. It's a little better than the last one. <laughs> Come on up here. He said I was just sitting under that pontoon, relaxing. Oh, oh, well, I got the fun out of him. I got the fun out of them. They're under the docks. The weightless, wacky rig Ocho. This is a five inch Ocho stick worm, watermelon red. And I'm using the original Owacky tool to put a O-ring up on the worm. You slide it down just like that. 
gets it right on that worm. And now, when I hook it, you just hook through the O-ring so you're not tearing up the worm every time. And that's the rig. Let's go get another one. Stick around. There's more old wacky worming coming right up. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Seaguar, trust Seaguar when everything is on the line. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. The original old wacky tool, your soft bait's best mate. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. Oh, there ought to be on that cast right there. Get out of there, get. Ooh. <laughs> I was going to say that was too good of a cast not to catch one. Ooh, not very big. Oh, hey, get out of that stuff. Yeah. Acting up. There we are. There we are. Not giant, but lots of fun. And he was right there where he was supposed to be. Got you good right in the meat there. Yeah. A nice one. All right. Cool. Get back into your dock. Yes, sir, that Ocho. But this is where that uh, a wacky O-ring comes in handy. Didn't tear up the worm. And I'm gonna catch me another fish on it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hook and Look. It's mind-boggling how effective a weightless, wacky-rigged Ocho can be. The fact that it skips so well makes it an ideal finesse technique to present quietly under these shallow docks and pontoons. The flapping action as I twitch the bait attracts the fish, but it's the slow tantalizing fall that induces the strike. In advance of the shoreline boat docks, the flat consists of a mixture of aquatic vegetation dotted with infrequent stumps, which were cut prior to the lake's impoundment decades ago. Nevertheless, once we penetrate the darkness, we reveal the life lurking in the shadows. Largemouth bass, as well as the food they eat, inhabit the shady structure. Largemouth and bluegill evolve together and both appreciate the security of an overhead canopy. Our underwater surveillance did disclose that the greater percentage of bass appeared to prefer the shelter beneath the pontoons. Although you certainly can't rule out the cover the boat lifts and removable docks offer. That's definitely where they're living today. He's under this stuff. You make the shot, you catch fish. Oh, good shot, kid. There's a fish. Ooh, that feels like a, that feels like a good fish, and it's wrapped up on something. That's a better one. That's a better one. Oh no, it's, it's the same old size. It just get wrapped up. Yeah. Come on over here. <laughs> It looks like he's been caught before. Not giant fish. I'm still trying to, you know, I'm catching, you know, the pound and a half, two pound, two and a half pound type. 
but I'm not getting that three and four, and I'm wondering, could they be out deeper? I'm, I'm gonna fish some more docks, and we'll see, but I'll, I'll try deeper as well. All right, I mean, you could throw a wacky worm all kinds of ways, and we'll show you. Some added oh wacky wisdom is on deck. Stay with us. We're here today at Ranger's 30th Annual Advantage Tour, learning about the new products. One in particular that excites me is the Ranger Z520L. One of the more obvious features is that Ranger has redesigned the console to accommodate 16-inch electronics. Furthermore, the bow will now accommodate 12-inch electronics. They've also redesigned the digital switching keypad. Another convenient feature is you've got the 12-volt receptacle, but also a dual USB port. Another feature that's unique to the L-Series are the ultra-comfort bucket seats, which are wider, they wrap around, they're taller, and now both the driver and the passenger side are adjustable. Another great feature is we've got the carpetless storage boxes, which have the patented power ventilation system, which keeps your rods and tackle dry. Dual live well lids now come standard. The tandem trailer fender and wheels have also been redesigned, enhanced by new modular trailer lighting. 50 years of angler feedback and innovation has made the Z520L one of the finest bass boats on the market. In addition to seeking shelter under shoreline docks and pontoons, largemouth bass will also venture deeper and hold along weed edges adjacent to the main lake drop-off. Schools of largemouth fingerlings can be observed occupying the weed beds as well as young of the year bluegill. The larger adults which cruise and feed along the weedy break can also be targeted with an old wacky rigged ocho. Kim explains how. What I've been skipping under the docks is a weightless Ocho, rigged, wacky style, or more appropriately, O wacky style, using the O-ring and the O wacky tool. But there's a number of ways to throw a wacky rig. This is great for shallow. I use a weighted wacky hook for the mid-depth to get the bait down a little further. That still has a lot of action. But what I'm gonna try next, I'm gonna fish off the brakes in a little deeper water, and I'm gonna drop shot it. Same bait, rigged with a drop shot rig, about 18 inches above the 3 8 ounce tour grade tungsten drop shot weight. But that'll have the same action, but deeper. There we go. There's one off the edge. <laughs> Come on, darling. There we go. Ooh. He came out of the cabbage, out of the line. Come on over here. Right in the old basket. There we go. That's a little better, but still not the giants I'm looking for, but still not a bad fish. On the drop shot, Ocho, wacky rigged. Nice, decent fish. What that is is a number one drop shot hook. And about 18 inches below it, I've got a 3 8 ounce tour grade tungsten drop shot weight. And the same thing, I put an old wacky O-ring on it and rigged it wacky style but it's a good way to, to fish deeper. And some decent fish out here. Let's see if we can catch some more. This cabbage 
grows out to about 10 to 11 foot. And there's another one right there. Get off that grass. Bad fish. Still, still they're kind of clones. Still they're kind of clones. Where are the big ones holding? Well, the deeper Ocho bite was producing pretty much the same results, with the exception of a little more variety and numbers of smaller fish. But the effort did demonstrate the versatility of an old wacky rig. And what the heck, it was worth a try in search of larger fish. Coming up, Kim returns to the docks. Right after these messages. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. Cushit, world's most comfortable rod butt. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. There he is. Come on out of there, come on out of there. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. You were in that under that dock, that's for sure. Well, not too bad a fish. A couple pounds. Well, maybe we will catch better ones under the docks. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it's later in the day now, and I mean, it's hot, it's sweaty, and that sun is pushing these fish up, up under the docks. I'll take fish like this any day. Thank you, baby. Skipping with spinning tackle is much easier as compared to skipping with bait casting equipment and is ideal for lighter lure presentations. A weightless, owacky rigged Ocho is more of a gentle finesse approach, and in addition, doesn't bang the sides of the boats and pontoons if your accuracy is less than stellar. We've all been hesitant when skipping jigs, afraid of waking up the neighborhood, let alone an irate boat owner. Best of all, you don't have to worry about backlashes. When bait casting, you roll your wrist on the skip cast. With spinning gear, it's more of a straightforward sidearm cast. We got him. Ooh, yeah, 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 get off that. That's the reason I've got Tatsu fluorocarbon. No doubt, when you have to fight those fish through all those corroded dock posts and boat lifts, odds are they're gonna wrap around a few. This is where fluorocarbon line outperforms monofilament hands down. Fluorocarbon is significantly more abrasive resistant than monofilament, and there's a likely chance that monofilament would have snapped in this rasping scenario. <laughs> oh, that's a decent fish, yeah. That's a decent fish. You know, I've got the smack down braid as my main line, but because of the clear water, I use fluorocarbon. But you want a good fluorocarbon that's gonna be abrasive resistant around those docks and those poles, and, and the tatsu does the trick. Not a bad fish. He ate it, he ate it twice. This is the first time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like doing this stuff. I like skipping those docks. And certain, certain docks and certain pontoons are better than others, and most of it's got to do with depth. There's got to be one. Drop the poles. And here we go again. 
When you penetrate deep within the metal structure, this is where all Seaguar fluorocarbon lines excel. There it is. Seeing is believing. When it comes to pulling those fish over the cross beams, Seaguar fluorocarbon line is worth every penny. Oh, that is a good one. <laughs> he, whoa, he don't know he's caught <laughs> until now. Get over here. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice one. Right under that dock right there. Ooh. They get under those docks and pontoons, man. Come on up here. That's a decent fish. Come right over to my man. There we go. Yes. Shoo. The Ho Cho. Old wacky rigged. Very nice. Nice chunker. I do like skipping docks and pontoons. Hopefully you learned something today. And please tune in again next week when once again we'll hook and look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.